In this series of short videos, we will be introducing you to the Military Aviation Preservation Society, or MAPS Air Museum, and some of the aircraft and displays that are located at our facility in Green, Ohio. We hope that these presentations enhance your appreciation of history and those that lived it. Man's fascination with flight and a desire to fly has always been with us. A quote attributed to Leonardo da Vinci gives you only one view of this obsession. It reads, once you have tasted flight, you will forever walk the earth with your eyes turned skyward, for there you have been, and there you will always long to return. At MAPS, the history of aviation is more than just airplanes. It is about those who have dreamed of flying, those who ultimately made those dreams a reality, and those that have experienced a freedom of flight. We hope to share that and more with you in these video presentations. We hope to cover the general background of each type of aircraft, as well as the history of the actual airframe that we have here at the museum. In some cases, we have dedicated specific aircraft to local men and women. If this is the case, we will discuss why we decided to dedicate an aircraft to them. In this video, we will be introducing you to one of the aircraft in our collection, the Ling Temco Vought or LTV A7E Corsair II. The LTV Corsair II had a long and honorable service career that spanned over 25 years of American military history. The Navy version of the A-7 Corsair II is a carrier-based subsonic light attack aircraft introduced to replace the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk. The Corsair II was later adopted by the United States Air Force to include the Air National Guard to replace the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider, North American F-100 Super Sabre, and the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief. The A-7 airframe design was based on the successful supersonic Vought F-8 Crusader, which served from 1957 to 1987. The A-7 was one of the first combat aircraft to feature a heads-up display, an inertial navigation system, and a turbofan engine. The A-7's wing was not only larger than that of the F-8, but had reduced sweep back as well as six pylons that could carry up to 15,000 pounds of bombs or other equipment. On September 27, 1965, the first A-7A performed the type's maiden flight. On November 2, 1965, Vought publicly demonstrated the first pair of A-7As. That and subsequent test flights demonstrated the aircraft's ability to perform rapid rolls even while laden with a payload of six 250-pound bombs and 12 500-pound bombs. Initial operational basing, or home porting, for U.S. Navy A-7 squadrons was at Naval Air Station, or NAS, Cecil Field, Florida, for Atlantic Fleet units, and NAS Lamour, California, for Pacific Fleet units. This was in keeping with the role of these bases in already hosting the A-4 Skyhawk attack squadrons that would eventually transition to the A-7. From 1967 to 1971, a total of 27 U.S. Navy squadrons took delivery of four different A-7 models. The Vought plant in Dallas, Texas employed up to 35,000 workers who turned out one aircraft a day for several years to support the Navy's carrier-based needs for Vietnam and Southeast Asia and commitments to NATO and Europe. Six Naval Reserve attack squadrons would also eventually transition to the A-7. 
The United States Army has not been permitted to operate fixed-wing combat aircraft since the establishment of an independent United States Air Force in 1947. To meet its need for close air support of its troops in South Vietnam, the Army pressured the Air Force to procure a specialized subsonic close air support fixed-wing aircraft that would suit its needs better than the general purpose supersonic aircraft that the United States Air Force preferred. The Vought A-7 seemed to be a relatively quick and inexpensive way to satisfy this need. However, on November 5, 1965, the Air Force Chief of Staff announced that they had decided to order a version of the Corsair II, designated A-7D, for the Tactical Air Command. The A-7D differed from the Navy's Corsair II in several ways. For one, the Air Force insisted on significantly more power for its Corsair II version, and it selected the Allison TF-41A1 turbofan engine, which was a licensed-built version of the Rolls-Royce Spey. Other changes included a modified heads-up display, a new avionics package, and an M61A1 rotary cannon in place of the two single barrel 20 millimeter cannon. The first spay powered A7D flew for the first time on September 26, 1968. The A7D first entered service in 1970 with the 57th Fighter Weapons Wing at Luke Air Force Base, Arizona. In Vietnam, the A-7Ds were quickly assigned the mission of providing air cover for combat search and rescue missions of downed pilots. Taking over from the Douglas A-1 Sky Raiders and adopting their call sign of Sandy, the A-7's higher speed was somewhat detrimental for escorting helicopters, but the aircraft's high endurance and durability were an asset and it performed admirably. The U.S. Air Force A-7D flew a total of 12,928 combat sorties during the war, with only six losses, the lowest of any U.S. fighter in the theater. The aircraft was second only to the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress in the amount of ordnance dropped on Hanoi, and dropped more bombs per sortie with greater accuracy than any other U.S. attack aircraft. The Navy was sufficiently impressed with the increased power offered by the A-7D spay engine used by the Air Force and decided to use this engine for its own version of the Corsair II. The designation A-7E was assigned and this version was to succeed the A-7B in production. The first spay-powered A-7E flew for the first time on March 9, 1969. The Marine Corps rejected the Corsair, opting instead for the vertical short takeoff or landing or VSTAL AV-8 Harrier as its light attack aircraft to replace its A-4 Skyhawks and entered service with the United States Marine Corps in January of 1985. The Navy's A-7E entered service in Southeast Asia in May of 1970 with VA or Attack Squadron 146 and VA 147, which were deployed aboard the USS America. The A7E participated in numerous close air support missions over both North and South Vietnam. The A7E state of the art bombing and navigation systems being particularly reliable and accurate. Most air wings operating the A 4 Skyhawks and early A7s were re-equipped with the A-7Es. On May 15, 1975, A-7E aircraft operating from the USS Coral Sea provided air cover in what is considered the last battle of the Vietnam War, the recovery of SS Mayaguez after it was hijacked by Khmer Rouge gunboats.
Production of Corsairs continued through 1984, yielding a total of 1,569 aircraft built. The A-7 Corsair has the distinction of being the only United States single-seat jet fighter bomber of the 1960s that was designed, built, and deployed directly into the Vietnam War. With the end of the Vietnam War, the Air Force began to transfer its active duty A-7D aircraft to Air National Guard units beginning in 1974. At that point, the Air Force was looking to develop its own close air support aircraft. Selection of the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II was made as the replacement for the A-7D. As the A-10s were received, the A-7Ds were transferred from the Air Force to the National Guard Bureau. A total of 15 Air National Guard squadrons were equipped with the A-7D Corsair II. The transition of all Air Force A-7Ds was completed in 1981. The Navy maintained the A-7E on active duty until the mid-1980s. Navy A-7E squadrons, VA-15 and VA-87, from the USS Independence, provided close air support during the invasion of Grenada, codenamed Operation Urgent Fury in October of 1983. Navy A-7s also provided air support during the U.S. mission in Lebanon in 1983. In June of 1984, Attack Squadron 105 was deployed to Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, Japan, assigned to Marine Air Group 12, 1st Marine Air Wing. This was the first time a Navy squadron had participated in the United States Marine Corps Unit Deployment Program and was the first Navy squadron since World War II to come under the command of a Marine Corps officer. On March 24, 1986, during the Gulf of Sidra dispute with Libya, Libyan Air Force defense operators launched SA-5 surface-to-air missiles at two VF-102 Grumman F-14 Tomcats from the USS America. The two aircraft were orbiting in international airspace on a combat air patrol mission. A-7s operating from the USS Saratoga responded by launching the first AGM-88 Harm missiles ever used in combat. On the next day, A-6 attacked Libyan warships approaching the U.S. fleet, while A-7s again launched Harm missiles at Libyan SAM sites. In December of 1989, the 175th Tactical Fighter Squadron of the South Dakota Air National Guard and the 112th Tactical Fighter Squadron of the Ohio Air National Guard were at Howard Air Force Base in Panama on a deployment supporting Operation Coronet Grove when President George H.W. Bush announced Operation Just Cause, the United States invasion of Panama. The Air National Guard squadrons participated in the invasion, flying 34 combat missions. While the Air Force's A-7s stayed at home in favor of the A-10s, the U.S. Navy deployed two of its last A-7E squadrons to Operation Desert Shield in August of 1990 aboard the USS John F. Kennedy, the only carrier of six deployed to Desert Storm to operate the A-7. The Navy squadrons VA-46 and VA-72 made the last combat sorties of the A-7 in Operation Desert Storm, flying from the Red Sea to targets throughout Iraq. The A-7 was used both day and night to attack a wide variety of heavily defended deep interdiction targets in Iraq and in Kuwait. The A-7 was also used as a tanker in numerous in-flight refueling missions. The 4450th Tactical Group, stationed at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, had the distinction of being the last active United States Air Force unit to operate the A-7 Corsair II. The mission of the 4450th Tactical Group 
was the operational development of the F-117 Nighthawk stealth fighter. There were approximately 20 A-70 aircraft used in developing the F-117, including several two-seat A-7K trainers. The A-7Ds and A-7Ks were obtained from various active duty and Air National Guard squadrons. Given the tail code LV, they were initially signed to the P or Provisional Unit of the 44th 50th Tactical Group, redesignating the 44th 51st Tactical Squadron in January of 1983. In January of 1989, three months after the United States Air Force admitted the existence of the F-117A, the A-7s were retired to the Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Center, or AMARC, and were replaced by AT-38B Talons as training aircraft, and the 4451st was deactivated. Some A-7s operated from the Tonopah Test Range Airport, about 30 miles southeast of Tonopah, Nevada, where the F-117s were being operationally tested. As a deception operation, care was taken to ensure the F-117As were never left parked outside aircraft hangars during daylight hours. However, A-7s were deliberately and routinely left outside hangars for the benefit of any orbiting Soviet spy satellites. The intention of this deception was to convince the Soviets that Tonopah operated nothing more exciting than some obsolete A-7 Corsairs. U.S. Navy A-7 Corsairs began being phased out of the fleet during the mid-1980s with the arrival of the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet. A-7 squadrons of the United States Navy Reserve transitioned at the same time. The last Navy A-7s were retired by the last fleet operational squadrons VA-46 and VA-72 in May of 1991 shortly after the return from deployment on the USS John F. Kennedy supporting Operation Desert Shield Desert Storm. By the end of 1998, with the exception of some airframes used as static displays, all United States A-7s were disposed of by the AMARC. General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcons began to replace the Air National Guard Corsairs beginning in the late 1980s, and the last were retired in 1993. The last units to fly the A-7E were Rickenbacker Air National Guard Base near Lockbourne, Ohio, Des Moines Air National Guard Base in Iowa, Tulsa Air National Guard Base in Oklahoma, and the Springfield Air National Guard Base in Ohio. The airframe that is on display at the MAPS Air Museum has a Ling Temco Vought A-7E Corsair II. In developing the histories of the aircraft located at the MAPS Air Museum, all available resources are researched and compiled. While most of the source materials are in agreement, some of the information obtained from various sources is inconsistent with the majority of the other data. If this is the case, the information that is presented represents the facts as presented by official sources whenever possible. The airframe at the MAPS Air Museum is an A7E version carrying the bureau number of 159268. It was built at the LTV Aviation Facility in Dallas, Texas and officially delivered to the United States Navy on March 21st 1974. The initial assignment for this Corsair was Attack Squadron or VA-66 then stationed at the Naval Air Station Cecil Field, Florida. 159268 would be based or in Navy terminology home ported at Cecil Field for a majority of its service life. During this initial assignment, 159268 
was deployed three times aboard the USS Independence as part of Carrier Air Wing 7 as aircraft number AG-306. Those deployments were to the Mediterranean Sea from July 19, 1974 to January 21, 1975, to the North Atlantic and Mediterranean from October 15, 1975 to May 5, 1976, and to the Mediterranean Sea from March 31, 1977 to October 21, 1977. Also, while assigned to Attack Squadron 66, the aircraft was deployed aboard the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, again to the Mediterranean Sea, this time from April 15, 1980 to December 22, 1980. The squadron returned from its deployment to the Indian Ocean after spending a total of 246 days at sea. With only one port visit, the longest sea period was for 153 days. Upon its return from the Indian Ocean deployment, 159268 was involved in an accident at NAS Cecil Field on January 15, 1981. The aircraft veered off the runway and down an embankment. It suffered moderate damage to its undercarriage and structural damage to its main airframe. In April of 1981, the airframe was detailed to the Naval Air Rework Facility at NAS Jacksonville for repairs. In August of 1982, the A-7E was reassigned to attack Squadron 174, again located at Cecil Field, Florida. VA-174 was responsible for conducting squadron transition training and training all replacement pilots and enlisted maintenance personnel who served in the Atlantic Fleet Light Attack Squadrons. At its peak, VA-174 was the largest aviation squadron in the U.S. Navy. Commander John McCain was the executive officer and commanding officer of VA-174 in the mid-1970s. In November of 1982, 159-268 was returned to VA-66. On January 5, 1982, the aircraft was deployed with Carrier Air Wing 7 aboard the USS Eisenhower to the Mediterranean. This deployment lasted until July 13, 1982. In April of 1984, the aircraft was reassigned to Attack Squadron 105 at Cecil Field. In June of 1984, the squadron was preparing for deployment to Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, Japan. Instead of being deployed to Japan with VA-105, 159268 was transferred to Attack Squadron 15 and remained at Cecil Field. On October 15, 1984, VA-15 was deployed as part of Carrier Air Wing 6 aboard the USS Independence to the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean. That deployment ended on February 19, 1985. In February of 1985, the A-7E was assigned to Attack Squadron 46 at Cecil Field. On August 24, 1985, 159268 was deployed with Carrier Air Wing 1 aboard the USS America to the North Atlantic as aircraft number AB304. That cruise ended on October 9, 1985. VA-46 was again aboard the USS America from March 10, 1986 to September 10, 1986, this time to the Mediterranean Sea. The airframe's last active duty assignment was with Attack Squadron 105, home based at Cecil Field. During this period, 159268 was deployed three final times. The first deployment ran from April 28, 1987 to October 9, 1987, with Carrier Air Wing 6 aboard the USS Forrestal to the North Atlantic in support of Exercise Ocean Safari 87. 
The second deployment, again with carrier Air Wing 6 aboard the Forrestal, lasted from April 25, 1988 to October 7, 1988, and took the aircraft to the Mediterranean Sea, through the Suez Canal, and into the Indian Ocean. The final cruise, again aboard the Forrestal with carrier Air Wing 6, ran from November 4, 1989 to April 12, 1990, and transited the Mediterranean Sea. On December 17, 1990, VA-105 was redesignated as Strike Fighter, or VFA Squadron 105, and transitioned to the FA-18C Hornet. In January of 1990, 159-268 was dropped from the active inventory, and on January 5th, it was transferred to the Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Center at Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Arizona. Fortunately, the aircraft's stay at Davis Monthan was short, as in June of 1991, it was transferred to the USS Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum in New York City. Well, in this museum, 159268 was featured in a scene from the movie National Treasure, starring Nicolas Cage. In late September of 2004, a team of MAPS volunteers arrived in New York City for a visit to the U.S. Naval Museum on the decommissioned aircraft carrier USS Intrepid. The purpose of the visit was to prepare and to transport two aircraft that were being placed on loan to MAPS from the National Naval Aviation Museum. Disassembly of the Ling Temco Vought A7E Corsair II Bureau number 159268, and a Grumman F-11F Tiger, Bureau number 141783, started on September 28, 2004. Slowed by difficulty preparing the F-11 for transport, the arrival of these two aircraft at MAPS was delayed until November of 2004. On November 19, 2004, a7E Bureau number 159268 arrived at MAPS. Restoration of the A7 started with the reassembly of the major components when it arrived at MAPS. Over the next five years, a team of volunteers cleaned and removed corrosion from the airframe, repaired or fabricated missing or damaged aircraft components, sanded, primed, and painted all external and internal surfaces, then researched and painted all the aircraft markings and signage. The restoration effort was completed in June of 2010. After restoration, the A7E was dedicated on November 11, 2010 at Faircrest Memorial Middle School in Canton, Ohio, to the memory of two Navy pilots from VA-105 based on the USS Saratoga, they were killed in Vietnam in 1972. Their names are memorialized on the cockpit of the aircraft. John Joseph Cabral was born in Middletown, Massachusetts on August 26, 1941. He attended Boston College on a presidential scholarship and majored in physics. Upon entering the Navy in 1967, he became a pilot, eventually being assigned to Attack Squadron 105, stationed on the USS Saratoga. On June 16, 1972, Lieutenant Cabral's A-7 crashed into the South China Sea shortly after takeoff. He was killed in the crash. Larry R. Kilpatrick was born on November 21, 1943 in Stone Mountain, Georgia. In June of 1972, Lieutenant Kilpatrick was a member of Attack Squadron 105, stationed aboard the USS Saratoga, flying A-7A Corsair II, Bureau Number 153230. On June 18th, Kilpatrick was flying in a flight of two A-7As on a night armed reconnaissance mission over northern Vietnam. Kilpatrick's wingman lost radio contact with him outside of Ha Tin City 
after he announced he had sighted a target and was commencing an attack. After daybreak, search and rescue aircraft observed remnants of a parachute near Kilpatrick's last known location, but could not identify it as Kilpatrick's. The search and rescue team was unable to locate any aircraft wreckage. He was then listed as missing in action. On April 17, 1978, the Department of the Navy changed the designation to killed in action. In 2018, in conjunction with the government of Vietnam, a wreckage site was excavated. The Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency report indicates that evidence at the site indicated that the pilot was inside the aircraft. On May 18, 2018, DPAA reported that Lieutenant Larry Kilpatrick had been accounted for. The A7E is now part of the MAPS Air Museum collection. The aircraft on display is an LTV A7E Corsair II, Bureau number 159268. It is painted with the markings of Attack Squadron 105 as assigned to the USS Saratoga in 1972. The type of markings that would have appeared on the aircraft of Lieutenants Cabral and Kilpatrick. The aircraft number 401 typically indicates it is the aircraft of the squadron commander. Commander Ken Richardson assumed command of VA-105 on July 27, 1989 and retained that command until March 28, 1991, so he would have led the squadron on the last cruise of the A-7 before it was retired and supervised the squadron's transition to the F-A-18 Hornet. The aircraft is on loan from the National Naval Aviation Museum at Pensacola, Florida.